Well, good evening and welcome to the Sunderland Select Board meeting. Today is Monday, August 31st, 2020. <clears throat> and uh, first up on our meeting, we have a fairly light agenda tonight. We have a, a discussion about a proposed 40B project for 61 to 67 Old Amherst Road. We've got our uh, bi-weekly COVID-19 state of emergency update. Um, we have on there as a placeholder discussions of benchmarks for employee wage and adjustment colos, but we um, probably will be talking about that because we don't have any info back from the state yet. Because we're all sitting there waiting for that. Any select board and town administrator updates, and then we've got some appointments under new business. So um, our first item on our agenda is the minutes from August 17th. Motion. Uh, and I'll second that. All those in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. All right. <laughs> zip on the minutes there. Where'd that voice come from, Scott? <laughs> He's taking care of something, so he'll be joining us in a minute. <clears throat> um, why don't we start with the um, do our COVID nineteen so we can um, wait for Scott before we get into the forty B proposal? How's that one? Uh, does that work for you, Laurie? Sure. No All right. Um, there he is. I made it. Thanks. Hey. There he is. <laughs> so I was notified on Tuesday, August 25th, that there is another close contact case in Sunderland. And what that means is the person does not have COVID, but they are a close contact of someone that does. does. Okay. So, I passed along that notification to the fire department and the police department. Okay. Um, and on August 20th, I was not able to attend the Deerfield Highway dispensing site Zoom meeting because I had to attend a MEMA meeting in Turner's Falls talking about the our electronic version of our comprehensive emergency plan. Ah, okay. So it's time to update that beast. And there will be sections for all of you to fill out. Yay! <laughs> yes, definitely. That time again. It is that time. Yep. So I'm working on the overall part of it, you know, changing the template to Sunderland. And okay. um, but there'll be parts of it for each department, highway department, police, fire, select board, so you know your responsibilities and your what your response is might be to different kinds of emergencies okay that that's good actually especially in light of just like in the in the natural disaster department it was shaping up to be a um, pretty active hurricane season from what it looks like so it, it is and you know during this meeting um, they were talking at MEMA and they said one of the things they did not put in this plan was planning for a pandemic ah Mm. Well we learned. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. So that's going to be updated. And that is the update oh. from me. Okay. All right. Um, thank you very much. And I, I know like I'll put it under here. I don't know if anybody has any uh, discussion points on it, but um, rather than keeping it as a separate agenda item, if there's anything about students returning at all, I don't know if anybody wants to discuss any points on that, but sort of lump that under our COVID update. Sure, I can speak just a little bit to that. There's been, the students have moved in at the new apartment complex and we've had three fire alarms there already. Ah. So, so the place is packed. Absolutely a lot of packed. cooking. So yeah. Lori? Yes, sir. So so you're saying that the it, it appears that there are many students living in the new affordable housing project. Yes. It oh. is packed to the rafters with students. Oh. Interesting. Okay. Thanks, Lord. You're welcome. Because we, we were told throughout the entire 14, 15 years that it was not for meant for students. Weren't we told that, Scott? <laughs> Scott, you need to un unmute. Yeah, you're muted. <laughs> Working. The mustache was there moving. There you go. <laughs> <I know. laughs> oh, you're muted. Right. 
There you go. Oh, now it's back on. How about that one? Now you're good. All right, thanks. So outside of the, uh, and thank you, Mr. Chair. If I could ask Jeff to have the developers come to one of our next several meetings to ensure that they understand the town's frustration with how the development was proposed and how the development is developing. I think it's really very important. There is a mixed community that was pitched to the town for the 40B for the appropriate percentage. Sorry, Tom, you have to, you have to listen to it. So there's a mixed percentage. Oh yeah, affordable. understood. Yep, understood. a mixed, mixed, not you, Tom, the other Tom, Tom, oh, Tom, who, Tom who's nodding politely. Yes. You know, there was, there was pitched to the town and when the town said, okay, we've exhausted our resources and we're willing to work with you on the development. Now it appears that there's a little bit of maximizing return in areas that were said not to be the direction of the development. So I don't wanna call it bait and switch, but it sure feels a lot like bait and switch. You mean like taking three bedroom apartments and turning them into four bedroom apartments by throwing another uh, bed in a, in a uh, large bedroom? Or registering with the DHCD as not doing it by unit, but doing it by beds. Those kinds right. of things, those kinds yeah. of things, you know, don't give a warm and fuzzy, even if it's a friendly 40B, this kind of approach would not be very welcome and should be called out. And, and not much the town can do at this point. I totally understand that. But at least we can call people forward and say, hey, you know, you said one thing and you did a bit of an extension. You didn't do it completely differently, but boy, that's a stretch. How do we work together? You want to work together on one side, sewer ties, water ties, road traffic, curb cuts, and then you shaft us in the end. So let's bring him in. Sounds good. Okay. Sorry, Tom. R. All right. So, <clears throat> Mr. anything Chair, else? But go ahead. Yeah, uh, just a, a couple of things um, mm -hmm. uh, on the state of emergency. One is um, I've been working on two documents. One's a sort of PowerPoint presentation to put up on the website that talks about how the town communicates and all the actions that we've taken um, mm -hmm. just to, as a good resource and then actually has a bunch of resources and links at the end. Um, and so I uh, was just working with the Board of Health chair on that to make sure it's every, um, accurate and, and contains all the information we want. Um, so that's likely going up and obviously I'll, I'll send it all out to all of you. Um, and then the second is just sort of a one page informational flyer that can be posted around and it's about wearing a mask keep social Excellent. distancing, um, you know, gathering sizes, limitations, um, and we're planning on sharing those with, with all of the apartment complexes and, you know, posting them around town and will be available if anybody else wants to use it, um, calling it Sunderland, stop the spread. And it's just sort of five tips, you know, clean services, wash hands. Yeah, that's excellent. Um, and then this, the second thing I just wanted to mention and, and give a shout out to uh, the police chief and the fire chief um, who both got uh, coronavirus emergency supplemental funds um, for PPE and uh, surge staffing, um, I think surge staffing for police. And it was uh, about $14,000 total. And that's um, from the federal government through the state um, that, that we, they had applied for those grant funds um, and found out, I think, last week that, that they were awarded. Oh, that's great. That's good fair. news. All right. So, Jeff, if I could, Mr. Chair. Jeff, yeah. are we communicating? The door's open, so I can hear a little. No, I guess a little echo. Um, is, are we communicating through the large property owners as well as uh, things like a sandwich board sign back out again, or a roadside sign. And as an extension 
because we have, you know, a growth in the population here in the town of Sunderland in the last 10 days. And I get it. We want to be a welcoming community. We want to ensure that the information's conveyed that the residents know their responsibilities. How are we doing that? Yeah, so um, we're trying to get the, the variable message board back out um, yeah. along the southern end of 116. Um, yeah. And it's you know, gonna again link to the mass.gov slash COVID or show okay. the link to the mass.gov website. And I think that the, the message that, that I'd proposed on the, the blinking was, I think something like, uh, Stay safe, stay safe, wear a mask, something like, you know, again, just COVID related yep. um, things. And then I talked to the police chief this morning, who's going to get me the email addresses. And he said, they all have email text blasts. So I was going to send that flyer out and say, hey, could you please distribute this um, to, to your residents mm -hmm. uh, as far as how to stay safe? And, and if you have the opportunity, please post it, you know, throughout your complexes. So um also working on getting the addresses of the um of all places where students have registered local addresses in sunderland and so we can do a mailing we don't know the names but uh, we could certainly do a mailing to those addresses um or we could do a larger mailing i guess if we wanted to and just have that one one pager of uh you know, tips for staying safe in COVID. Um, as well, is there an FCAT component? I mean, we're, we're doing what we do now, but is there an right. FCAT component as well? Right, like the community TV channel? I mean, you want the same, same message from, you know, every, every potential mm -hmm. angle without it being complete saturation, which, you know, it's election season, so welcome to saturation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, we, uh, they, FCAT has been great at, at posting um, whenever we have information to put out, so that's a great suggestion. They're listening right now, so make sure to say good <laughs> things about them. <laughs> the great and powerful laws, right? <laughs> exactly. Right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Jeff. <clears throat> yep, no problem. Um, so, so, Jeff, so yes. typically we email the complexes and the complex will then email their residents, right? Yes. Good. Yep. That's the plan. And, and 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 again, from from what we're what we're seeing, it appears the data that we're looking at is that um, if if you continue, you know, it, it's not the singular person that goes out shopping that that seems to be the problem. It's when you have gatherings of 100, 200 people, and that's where it seems we get the mass, content, you know, the mass infections of COVID, so. Those and again, bachelorette parties and such. Okay, yeah, I, I just think that what we need to try, you know, try to stress is that, and, and I think it goes back to the man, and when I would say the management of the, the complex, they say, look, just, just tell your people, be smart, I mean, you know, they, they, you can't have gatherings of over 25 people inside, over 50 outside. And, and let's, I mean, let's make it through this year. And I, I don't, we're all in this together, I think, you know, and we need, we, and we need to get our economy back. We need our kids in school to, and, and I don't, I don't think you can talk to many pediatricians or education people that are going to tell you that it's, it's good to keep kids out of school. They need that interaction. They need that. Right. They need to be communicating with teachers. They need to be communicating with their friends. They need to, that, that show, social aspect that they're, that they're missing right now. So. Right. That's a really good point, Tom. All right. All right. Thank you. Anybody have any other topics under uh, COVID? I would All ask right. you, I would ask yeah. one question if I could, Mr. Chair. Oh, so please. from an uh, EMD's perspective, you're in the response mode, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to see some reporting from neighboring communities 
but effectively when it gets to your desk or the emergency room desk, what's the trigger that starts um, contact tracing? What are the, th and this is more informational for the public than it is, I think I know the answer. Good but question though. Yep. It's like, okay, so we have, we have a, if a party at Bergeron's house, there's 55 people, what happens? It's not until the case is confirmed and put in the MAVEN system ah. that the Sunderland Public Health nurse is notified of the case. And then she notifies me. And then I send a text out to Steve and Eric. Got it. So it has to go in the MAVEN system. And that's one thing that she was talking about was not, you know, we're not going to know these students in these, in these how in these complexes because she's not sure they're going to be getting, getting entered in the MAVEN system. Understood. So that's a, that's a, a state database. Yes. Got it. So, so Jeff, how, how are they tied in? How, how are they tied in with UMass? Cause if there's students at UMass, UMass knows. Because students UMass are getting it, yes. right. UMass knows. So how 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 are we connected with with university and their data, or are we connected? So the university has a, a public dashboard, and that's one of the things that's going to be in in the resources um, section of the presentation that's going up. But in addition to that, um, we are working on setting up regular meetings with them and. The first topic of discussion is making sure that our public health nurse and uh, university health services have open lines of communication and that as soon as they're made aware of a student that tests positive and has registered a Sunderland address that that information is shared with the town. Yeah, I, and, 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 and while we're on that for one second thing, um, I just want to let everyone know um, we don't publicly talk about a lot of stuff that we're doing, um, like what Jeff is talking, but just so th there's a lot of things that are happening in the background that we're kind of up to date on, on, on a daily, sometimes hourly thing. And, and, and Jeff is working with, with the university, with, with the town of Amherst, the uh, surrounding communities, we're all, they're all talking as, as, as well, as well as the board of health and, and again, the Board of Health, it doesn't go out with a, when, when, they, when they have a concern or they're doing things, they don't kind of go out with a trumpet and blow the trumpet so everybody knows what they're doing. They just kind of make sure that people know what's, they're, they're taking care of the things that are happening as they're, that are occurring. And, and they're not tooting horns and blowing, blowing whistles and, and bringing people to that that level that what, what they're trying to do is is a do the job in a confidential manner um, keeping the town safe so so again we're doing the same thing that the you know the town the town administrator is working the, with the selectmen you know attending meetings zoom meetings and all kinds of different different things but so a lot of things that we're not that it doesn't get publicized because I don't know how you would publicize everything that we do because you really can't but I just want people to know that that the Board of Health is working on a lot of different things, and just like just like Jeff, if you ha and if you have a concern, and we have gotten a couple emails about people that have concern, tone tone down the anger, um, send us what your thoughts are, and and we will we'll work with you. You know, some some of the things we can we can make happen, some we can't, but we'll try the best that we can, and we're not. And I think that's the most important thing. Things are, if you have a concern, let us know and we'll try to help. Good points, Tom. Yeah, if I, if I could, Mr. Chair, Tom, what you're yeah. describing is effectively there, that there is a, a real process, right? We have, we have the emergency director right here. We talk to the town mm -hmm. administrator. We talk to our neighboring communities in a, in a near constant, in a near constant conversation while maintaining uh, any individual's um, right to privacy while the tension is around the public, right? So it, that's going on all the time. And I think you, you summed it up well, you summed it up pretty well by saying that, you know, this isn't just waiting for a report to drop in on Monday night. Right. No, this happens all the time in real time with respect to everybody who's participating. So 
It's an ongoing it's a, process. It's a process. Scenes. Exactly right. A lot going on behind the curtain. Right. All right. Excellent points. All right. Uh, our next topic. Thanks for waiting, Tom. Appreciate it. Uh, you got a. You've got an update for us on your. 61 to 67 Old Amherst Road 40B project. Wait, which Ooh. Tom? <laughs> the Tom Reedy. <Reedy's>, uh, <laughs> Who Tom? Hey, Tom. That's true. Uh, well, thanks, Mr. Chair. Thanks, members of the board. Thank you, Mr. Kravitz. Uh, Tom Reedy, attorney with Bacon Wilson uh, down in Amherst, uh, here with Jason Keatsa. So we were here, boy, several weeks ago. We talked about 61, 67 Old Amherst Road in Sunderland, here in Sunderland. Um, we talked about a 40B project. Uh, we really took a lot of the comments that we got to heart. I mean, I think Jason in particular. Um, and I'll turn it over to him to just talk through some, some redesign. It was probably a somewhat tough segue to come from um, what's happening down on Plumtree to, to what Jason's looking to do because yeah. they're both 40B projects. But I think what you're going to hear from Jason tonight is, you know, it, it's not students. Um, you know, we also took a look at the housing production plan. Tom had suggested we take a look right. at it. So I, I looked through it, um, you know, in, in the, the takeaway was really affordable housing w was when I read the whole thing. That was like, there was a, a strong focus on providing affordable housing. And there's probably a couple of ways to do that. And, and Jason and I really haven't talked about, you know, what, how this is going to be restricted in the 40B and what income level we're going to restrict it to. Um, and also seeing that, you know, senior housing was one of the other things. I think that's gonna be the biggest population in 2030 in Sunderland was, was the senior housing. Um, and I don't know that this would be a senior housing project, but we just wanted to at least have the opportunity to advance the ball a little bit um, and to just talk about Jason, his management, his design, and, and just some of his anecdotal experiences in this community and the surrounding community. And so, Jeff, I don't know if you've got, uh, I know Jason had sent to you those revised floor plans, so maybe... And Jason, I'll, I'll turn it over to you and let you steer this ship. Um, and so whether it's the, the little chart that you put together or the floor plans or the, the photos, whatever you want, maybe to, to direct Jeff if he's willing. Sure, sure. Yeah, hey, hey everyone, thanks for having us on again today. Um, we certainly, like Tom said, took all the constructive criticism and uh, made some changes. So one of the things we did was we reached out to the architect and we had him take some of the smaller studio units and they actually created, um, we dropped the number of units, I believe it was from 29 or 30 down to 25. And in doing so, we created some three bedroom units, we created some two bedroom units, and essentially we got rid of the smallest studio spaces. So I think that it gives it a nice, um, you know, contrast of, of, you know, bedroom, um, bedroom units so that it's not all one beds in studios. I know that um, there was some feedback that, you know, we certainly didn't want to um, seem like we were creating some kind of, you know, frat house and that's not what we're after. Um, so we, we did that to start. I also put together just a quick compilation of um, during the month of August, some units that we had advertised and just kind of what we got for inquiries for those units um, and the demographic of people who reached out for those units. Um, I did this uh, last week or the week before, and it's funny because we had a unit recently. Um, it was very quick that it, it kind of came up. Uh, it's, it's in Sunderland on South Silver Lane. It's a one bedroom apartment and it's not shown on here, but I just wanted to share because it's interesting. Um, the unit came up last week. The people said basically um, we're having some problems with what's happening in the economy. Uh, we can't pay, but we're willing to break our lease and move out early. And so uh, we accepted um, that unit is shown in those pictures that I provided and it's the one that's furnished. It's a nice one bedroom. I listed that one bedroom 
uh, for rent on uh, Saturday morning. And we had to pull the ad Sunday because we had 30 inquiries for that one bedroom apartment. Of those 30 inquiries, uh, we set up 15 showings. We stopped at 15 showings. Not one of those parties are students. None of them. Those are working professionals. Uh, there was inquiries from some seniors looking to downsize from houses that they've sold. Um, people who are looking to move to the area because they have jobs nearby. Um, in a select, I think that there was maybe um, two grad students that reached out, but nothing, um, nothing like, you know, I, I, I can certainly see what's happening at the, the Sugar Bush Meadows estates there, and I don't follow it closely, but I think that a lot of what you're, you know, it's, it's, it's targeted marketing, you know, and if you set up, um, if you set up shop in downtown Amherst and solicit people from downtown Amherst, I mean, what, what's going to happen, you know? And so I just want to really point out that we are kind of running things on a different level. Um, we just filled three units at the Pioneer Valley um, apartment complex on Old Amherst Road. Again, we had three uh, two bedroom units that came up. One of those two bedrooms is shown that we recently renovated. Um, all three units were advertised and uh, all three units were filled. Um, one professional couple moving to the area, one young girl moving to the area and uh, two grad students who recently uh, graduated from Amherst College and are trying to finalize um, just some, some of their logistics to finish their degrees looking for a, kind of a quiet place. So um, I just you know wanted to try to make it clear that we're not um, trying to recreate the same thing that you're dealing with um, down the road. So we, we, don't, we certainly don't wanna be lumped into that same classification. So we have made an honest effort just to show that and then to um, just provide a little bit of evidence and, and show that, you know, we were willing to go back to the drawing board as far as kind of revamping um, the design of, of the proposed complex. Uh, one other thing to add is that with um, reusing the existing large nursing home building, um, We've talked a lot with the architect about um, the ease of creating some ADA compliant units. And so I think that's just important to mention that it's, um, it's, it would be very easy for us to make those units accessible to some of the elderly population, which there's certainly um, a high demand for. So um, I just wanted to point that out as well, so. Did you have any idea how many units you were thinking of doing that to? We didn't. Um, we didn't talk in in any great detail, but um, with the accessibility of these units, um, it's rather simple. Just because they're all kind of mm -hmm. this is slab on grade construction, and so right. everything is very very accessible um, from exterior. And the way that they 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 gave us a number of you know, uh, floor plans to kind of sift through that they came up with. And um, I think that, you know, these are, are pretty friendly as far as access, easy access from a number of different e egresses. So, um, so we could certainly talk more about that, but the, the option is certainly there to do that. Not, not so much, it definitely won't be as easy with the house um, just because right. of two, two stories, but right. um, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So okay. if I could just do a, a quick plug, just because you mentioned it, Jason, um, if you do have any other tenants that are having trouble paying rent for COVID related reasons, there is an emergency rental assistance program for Sunderland residents. Um, through the Community Preservation Committee, uh, CPA funded program, $50,000 available to income eligible residents who are having trouble um, paying rent. So 
I just wanted to put a little plug in since you, you mentioned it. No, de definitely good. good to know. Um, we really haven't seen a lot of pushback um, or problems, so to speak, from COVID. This particular situation, uh, this couple hasn't even lived in the apartment since I can't even tell you um, when. We don't typically ask a lot of questions, but they haven't been there, you know, for months. So it was very easy for them to just say, hey, you know, we don't really need to be here. If you guys can fill the unit, we're happy to kind of pack and leave. They've been there for three years. They were great tenants. And so um, it really just made an easy transition. Um, I, I just wanted to kind of share how, how much demand exactly um, there is because it's, it's like, like I said, I mean, within 24 hours, we had to pull the ad just because um, of the flood, just the complete flood of inquiries. So So I, I think what we'd be looking for is maybe a little bit more guidance um, ultimately to go through the 40B uh, pr uh, process. We've got to submit a letter, hopefully a letter of support um, from the select board to DHCD um, on site eligibility and, and then move to the next step. So I don't know that it would be fair of us to ask for that this evening, though, if, if you want to give it, we won't stop you um but just thinking if there's any other guidance that you can provide for us to maybe go back to the drawing board or or anything else you would like to see ahead of some future meeting either the next one or the one after that um that we could maybe get you to a place of feeling comfortable enough to 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 support or recommend that dhcd issues that site eligibility letter um and so we're all ears you know this is I think it'd be rented by the unit, not, not the bed, which is obviously one of the problems that, that you're having down at the, the flats. Yep. Um, and then also looking at the housing production plan, you've, you know, it's, it's been identified that there's been limited interest by developers. And one of the solutions is to work with private developers who propose these 40B projects. And I think Jason's probably you know, a, a quintessential example of who you'd like to do that with, especially you know, just with this first step of being responsive. You know, I, I've, I've known Jason and he is, he's, he's thoughtful and he's, uh, he's thoughtful about his reputation and the town's reputation. So, you know, if you've got any other suggestions, thoughts, comments, et cetera, we're more than happy to think about them. I can see Tom's got one. Well, I, you know, I, I was waiting for, I, I would, I would just, you, you know, I, I don't know, Jason, if you were on earlier where, where we're having, um, we talked about the um, a 15 year conversation that we had with the people that developed uh, the flats, the North flats or whatever, and about their arguments that they were used in housing courts and, and everywhere else. Um, so I, I, I guess I would, would want to see something in in writing about how your how your project would differentiate from what's what's presently offered in town and in the surrounding area that would be beneficial to um young professionals or working professionals or working working class individuals why yours would be different and how you would make it different um and, and again i you know some sometime and again i know things change I, I know from from my research what i what i look after talking to you is that um the newer generations may not be looking at owning homes or property any longer they're they may be more interested and having somebody else do the lawn and could we all like doing snow blowing the snow <laughs> and mowing the lawns and can't get enough um, of that and 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 repairing the dishwasher as it breaks or the wigwag solenoid on the washing machine um but the, some people may no longer enjoy doing that i don't know why so so i guess to 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 go going the next step it would be nice to understand 
what you would do to your project to entice, um, you, you know, people that, you know, that are new, just entering the workforce, what, what you would do um, and, and how you would differentiate your, to, to welcome um, um, new families with, with, with uh, you know, just two or maybe three people, how, how you would differentiate your projects and how you would market your projects and ways that you would ensure that those people or people like that would be given first option into the pro project. Uh, program into the building and and the, I think that's 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 important I, I think it's important it, it if you look at um, e even if you look at the 40b project or the the entire foundation of the 40b it's a it's by by theory it's a wonderful program in our area it hasn't worked that some parts in the eastern part of the state it's worked out well so if we if we could find something that would make it make it so that it would be beneficial to our our, our working people our working working members of our community to join our community and not get priced out because they're they can put five five students in a uh, in an apartment and they can get more money doing that than a working group so that's what I would be looking for, Jason and Tom. How's that? Perfect. Sure. Yeah, we're certainly happy to um, address it as as feasible. I guess I'll have to have some discussion with Tom because it's somewhat of a slippery slope where I don't really think that we can discriminate and say we're going to design right. this complex so that right. students are not allowed. Um, right. And again, to kind of circle back. I think that what a lot of this comes down to is marketing and the target audience that you're advertising these units to. And when you set up, you know, a stand in the middle, right in the heart of the University of Massachusetts, and you send up signals, um, that's going to attract students. If you, uh, you know, we would typically market our units, um, not on Facebook Marketplace typically, but on Zillow and Craigslist. And um, there's certain verbiage that we use. And, you know, uh, we screen every tenant ourselves. And there's questions that prospective tenants ask, you know, who are my neighbors going to be? Can you give me hints? And, you know, those answers that we provide are going are gonna to be indicative of, um, of, of the neighbors that those people are going to have. And a lot of professional people, if you say, are, you know, is it all students here in this complex? You know, they're, they're not going to want to lease there. And so um, some of that feedback, just in general discussion, provides a lot of insight on who's there, what's happening, you know, are there young families here, are there professionals here? So there's kind of ways that we try to skirt around saying, um, hey, you know, uh, we're, not looking to rent to X, Y, or Z because we can't say that. Um, and so we're, we're certainly happy to provide anything we can't to, to say that we are going to make every effort to provide housing for, um, for, you know, working class, new families and new um, younger people. A lot of it too is just, um, you know, a, a lot of the demand, as I said, are, you know, number one is um, seniors who don't want, or maybe not even seniors, but, you know, maybe someone who's had a house for 30 years and just is tired of it, you know, and, and like you said, they're sick of, you know, fixing the snowblower every week and it's easier to pay rent and, you know, make a phone call and something's taken care of. And, and we get a lot of those inquiries um, from people who are just sick of that. And we also get a lot of inquiries from, you know, single, um, single young, respectable people who just need an affordable place. You know, like I said, we just filled three units at Pioneer Valley Apartments. One of those units uh, was a, a younger woman, respectable, who was just working 
a normal job in the area and just needs a quiet, um, nice place to live, you know, and, and doesn't want the noise and the, dis the disruption of, you know, some of the surroundings that you might find at um, other complexes. So um, I can certainly talk with Tom and we can, we can certainly try to outline uh, whatever we can. I just want to be clear that, you know, there's certain, obviously certain things that we have to be mindful of when we do, um, when we do outline some of those plans. If that makes Understood. sense. Understood. Okay. Jason, we, don't want you to break, we don't want you to break the law. Yeah. <sighs> There's another thing I just want to mention um, uh, along with uh, what Tom was saying was, you know, it, it's not just about marketing. We've been talking about the interiors of the building and, ha and the unit counts and the size of the unit, but, you know, you have, I think it's 10 acres there. If you put a playground there, that's going to signal to people that it's young sure. families. If you put a bingo hall there, that's probably going to single, <laughs> sing, have a different <laughs> signal. You know, so I think you can think about also, um, besides the unit size, you know, may, maybe think creatively about how to, how to um, and I understand it's across the street from an elementary school with a playground, so maybe right. that's not the best example. But you know, uh, you know, are there other things that that would help be attractive within the site um, to to different demographics? Sure, Under understandable, definitely. You won't see a. Um, uh, I forget when I looked at the. 116 flats i think that there was a game hall or rec recreation center you won't you won't see a recreation center at um 61 old amherst road so i think that um there won't be any uh foosball table generally at that um at, at our project so i did i did notice that the flats i haven't followed the whole story but i've seen um i've certainly seen bits and pieces. I had a brief conversation with um, one of the gentlemen that was running the job there. And I think he said that I might be wrong, but that that complex is already sold a few times, changed ownership. So it's interesting to hear some of the, uh, some of the scuttlebutt around town. Yeah, that, that has gone through a number of iterations, I believe over the years. Yeah. So if I could, Mr. Chair, there are a couple of questions. Yeah, and uh, Jason, Jason, thanks for sharing. And Tom, thanks for keeping him on mark because, you know, somebody's got to watch his back. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, a couple of pieces. The first is to Tom F., uh, Tom Feidenkevitz's point, a narrative in the 40B and a pro forma application to, to the ZBA, we have had two experiences in town. One, very fulfilling. One, very scar inducing. So I would say you want to take a look at what RDI did with its submittal in its pro forma and its target. Now you're not targeting exclusively senior housing. And I completely understand that. But each of the steps that RDI went through for that 40B, the friendly 40B, which I, I mean, feeling is the model this is based on. Um, that level of transparency helps get through CBAs, town meetings, difficult questioning sessions, lots of difficult questioning sessions. This is like open heart surgery when it comes to development. So be ready for those kinds of questions. That said, that pro forma and that narrative in that ZBA application for mm -hmm. 40B are going to be important. I want to, th I want to thank you, you and your, your team for looking at the ADA components. Even if it's a handful of ADA components, if you talk to other um, property owners who rent over the long term, you know, and you're in the business, turnover is the worst, right? It's just the worst. You want long term tenants. You want long-term relationships. You want to have them reinforce your reputation. You don't, you know, we don't want 
you or we don't want Board of Health calls and police calls and all of that stuff that goes along with it. And I, I have a feeling that what's being presented in this next phase, including some of the adaptability, uh, was not just, you know, um, feel good effort as well thought out. And I want to thank you for that. And I think lastly, you know, the senior piece you said uh, earlier, senior housing in 2032 is the most stable in many ways. Well, if it is, they try not to go anywhere, right? They want to be in town. They want something that is predictable, walkable, and they want to be able to be in the space with people that they trust. And I say people primarily in management. You know, their neighbors are their neighbors, but their management is a whole different level of neighbor. Um, so I want to thank you for that, those, those pieces that you've added to this part of the discussion. And, you know, in the grand scheme of things, 40B is, is uh, collaborative or it's, it's combative. And I, I feel that in this relook at the space, there's some collaboration. I want to thank you for that. So that said, we're ready to fight. We're also ready to, you know, cooperate. And that 10 acres, don't turn it into a solar field, will you? It's just <laughs> my opinion. All right. That's great feedback. I give you guys enough time to take the next step. I think so. Jason, any other okay. thoughts or questions? I, no, I think that's it. I mean, I think that we can certainly try to just outline some details um, and just come back as, you know, with, uh, with kind of a solid, you know, number one marketing plan, but we can also certainly, we'll have a discussion with the architect and just maybe pinpoint, um, you know, just, just kind of revisit the ADA and, and some of that um, aspect of the build out so that we do that in the, uh, most beneficial way that we can. And then, um, maybe just outline some outdoor features that might be, um, attractive to, you know, not only young professionals, but, um, you know, families and some seniors as well. So, um, again, with just, just to touch on the 10 acres, I really haven't thought anything about it, the, the land. <laughs> I keep outback. bringing it up. <laughs> so, um, yes. So we'll certainly try to at least utilize part of that space um, just to be, you know, proactive and providing um, a nice outdoor living space for uh, potential tenants there. So um, we could try to, you know, make, make some of those changes and then, hopefully, you know, come back and, and revisit with some firm, um, some more firm details that hopefully will uh, persuade you guys to give us the green light if possible. So, so if, if I could, miss, if I could, Mr. Chair. Yeah, please. Tom R., have you done a, a friendly 40B before? Yes. I, I, okay. I just, I wanted to ask, I remember from the last discussion, it's been, a, been you know, a nearly a month, but I wanted to ask the question. So you, you know, the kind of uh, rules of engagement and what's important. Yes. Very good. Thank you. And, and uh, just sort of echo one of the points that Scott made. Thanks. We, we appreciate the, um, the effort you guys have put in so far on it. So. Thank you. Thanks for the time. And, and your town administrator is doing a wonderful job as well. Yeah, we've heard that. That's a rumor out there. Yep. We we only see him when he's not on vacation. He's back yeah. this week, so we'll talk to him. There you go. He's he's got his hands full. So that's right. But cheers and thanks right. so much. Thanks, right. thanks, guys. thanks a lot. Guys. Appreciate it. Have a good one. All right, you too. All right. Um, I mentioned we don't have any. I don't think we have any new um, financial information from the state as of yet for our benchmarks for our wage adjustments yet. So we're all waiting. For that information, uh, could I just could I just say, Mr. Chair? Yeah. Uh, since our last meeting, we know that the state has voted a budget to November, and that's yeah. based on a, 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 a real time set of revenues. But in the same in the same discussion, we also know that two large employers in the last week 
uh, both MGM Springfield to a lesser extent impacting Sunderland, but also UMass have, have also announced both furloughs and challenges to their annual operating budget, which clearly yeah. can affect uh, the town of Sunderland. So I think it's important, even though we don't have uh, a straight spreadsheet from the accountant or the treasurer collector, well, that's coming up because property bills are out there. So we'll see right. how those collections come in. That's really a truly our first local benchmark. However, on the state side, it's important to bear in mind, the news seems to be gray, but not gloomy and fluid. So stormy seas continue. I want to continue to talk about that as we go forward. Yep. Local, local layoffs are a big deal. At the right. same time, state revenue is a big deal. And as someone who's been in this, in not specifically the chair I'm sitting in, but you know, on this side of the camera now, uh, we also have seen how over a 20 year period, uh, a national election year can affect people's hairstyles and attitudes. And so yes. that, that can also affect local and state receipts. So I would just bear that in mind. Excellent point. Points, I should say. All right. Thank you. Um, do we have any select board updates tonight? May not be. Uh, we're continuing to negotiate with the uh, police union. Uh, we were on last Thursday. I want to thank Jeff, uh, the chief, as well as uh, union reps. Uh, it's been really both creative and fruitful discussions uh, Good. based in based in some reality. So excellent. Hopefully, hopefully one, two more <laughs> meetings, three, four, whatever. We're continuing yep. on, but the 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 dialogue is is solid. Good. Excellent. <laughs> All right. Um, and I know it's been very quiet with you, Jeff, but it was our town administrator uh, looking. <laughs> I, I actually do have a, a bunch of updates. Um, the, continuing my professional education, um, procurement training, I'm I think about halfway done with the required procurement um, training. Nice. So halfway done the second of three required courses. Um, and then I'm also starting a, a human resources boot camp this week so brushing up on those skills as well you know, the, um, ir the irony of that sentence is just wonderful yeah. <laughs> hr um, boot camp hr boot camp sorry um and speaking of um hr hopefully oh lights oh. are going out um the um we had some interviews for a, a highway laborer position and hopefully we'll have a recommendation for your next meeting, um, bring the highway super in. So just want to keep you updated on that. Um, today was the last day for public comments on the municipal vulnerability preparedness plan um, that we met about uh, earlier in the month. Um, so we should, be wrapping that up with the, the final report to the state and then moving on to the local multi-hazard mitigation plan, which we're also hoping to wrap up by the end of the year. Excellent. Um, last week, the notices of taking were sent out. Um, the uh, order of taking has been recorded for the North Main Street project. Um, so that that is continuing to, to move forward with a bid advertising date of September 12th. So um, again, no, no construction until next construction season, but um, hopefully going out to bid on, on that um, and working with uh, the highway super and, and FERCOG to try to simultaneously bid the, um, lengths uh, the the things that didn't make it into the the final right. project because of budget stuff so trying to, to keep that going um and so then if I, if I could sorry to interrupt if i could mr chair yeah. so when you say out to bid this isn't dot's That's... bailiwick right and we're bidding so let me 
back up. The town engineering completion documents are bid ready and they're heading out. Am I hearing that correctly? So the bid is going to be advertised on the 12th and then it has to be advertised. This is coming back to my procurement training. Yeah, I was yes, say. Thank you. Uh, a <laughs> this is a quiz. period of time, we'll at least two there. weeks, depending on the complexity of the project. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'm, I don't have a date of when the bid will actually open or close mm -hmm. at this point, but yes, that, that is in Matt, uh, MassDOT's hands as far as they are doing the, the procurement uh, um, for it. So that reinforces, I think, the question I was trying to get to and, and fumbled toward, and that is that our documents, our submissions, all of that it fits inside the MassDOT framework and it's ready to go. So how many CHA change orders can we expect <laughs> at this point? At yeah. this point, not necessarily moving forward, this point. Uh, I wish that change orders. the answer was none. Uh, wait, change orders or that, is that? I hear you, Tom. I heard you. None. None. That's right. These are the bid documents. Okay. Ch change orders are a reflection on the engineering. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we, we hope no, no change orders. Um, that, that, I mean, they were accepted by MassDOT, so that, that is the plan. Uh, Good. Sounds like all errors and omissions to me, Scott. I, I was, Tom, that was a softball. <laughs> I knew you'd be all over it. <laughs> errors and omissions. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt, Jeff. No. Um, and My the, training. <laughs> <laughs> the training. The last thing I, I just wanted to talk about is we um a, a couple of scheduling things uh you know we had talked about perhaps going back to weekly meetings after labor day um we had talked about inviting um mastod in to talk about the 47 116 intersection we had talked yep. about inviting the superintendent and elementary school principal in um there's an update about 120 North Main Street and the local preference. And so I didn't know if um, you wanted to sort of sketch that out. And I guess the first thing would be when weekly meetings resume or uh, if you had a priority and then also inviting in, you know, we we're talking about inviting in the developers of North 116 flats. And um, right. if there was a priority of who you wanted to meet with first um, or how you wanted to, to work those scheduling things. I suspect it'll probably take a little while to get the DOT, right? So we probably have to at least start that process with them, right? Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep I can uh, and reach out to them and, and see which, which Monday nights they'd be available. Okay. What, what do you guys think about priorities of the other things? Well, I would, if I could, Mr. Chair, mm. ask if there's date sensitivity to RDI's. Um, yep. If RDI's request uh, is, is date sensitive so that we don't hold the project up in any way, shape or form. Yep. I would also, because of the impact of 120 North Main and the intersection, no pun intended, the mm -hmm. intersection, schedule intersection of North Main Street reconstruction that we ensure there's um, as much intertie as, mm -hmm. as, is, as is possible. We know those also work will be south of School Street. That's part of that. That's the second set of bids. Yeah. Um, so that bidding process, you procurement guys would have to look at and, <laughs> and say, well, if we're doing this in 2021 and we start it in June of 2021, we can't get bids out and et cetera, et cetera. So I think there's homework there uh, from a prioritization perspective. I think it's important to keep our school and being able to respond and then RDI respond to whatever's happening in the school system. Our RDI piece, something just fell, RDI piece 
making sure that we're not missing a, a some kind of weird submission date to who whatever DHCD. We want to make sure they're supported. Right. And then and then the third tier, of course, is going to be you know the moving parts that are 120 North Main plus our impacts on south of school street and then there is an active working group on the school street and center so there's the village center group there's, yep. there's a, a working group in that space so I, I i don't necessarily have a prioritization but i think that those are the key components in there and it's also important to bear in mind it's september and we're going to start talking about you know early december our budget submissions. Yep. So I'm not that needle, needle stuck in a groove on a piece of vinyl, but it doesn't go away. This is very true. Really, the budgeting is all year. It's just some, sometimes the year are more active oh, we, than others. Yeah, we just, so we just took 90 days off. It's okay. Yeah, exactly. Now it's all back. But I would think that in those, prior, in those areas, all set against the backdrop of COVID, all set against the backdrop of what we're dealing with, all set against the backdrop of helping our local businesses because it's September 1st tomorrow and we're all gonna start moving indoors. And That's things right. are gonna get different in a relatively short period <clears throat> of time. That's right. <clears throat> and you know, we, we, we need to aim for as much stability in our lives as possible because stability generally tends to equal prosperity for everybody. So that's fair. Yeah, I was in a, I was in a basement today and the garlic's already drying. That's all I uh, got to say. Yeah, I have mine drying as well. So yep, the harvest is in. Right. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Jeff ran away. He's had enough. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, if you occasionally. Oh, he's back. <laughs> If you occasionally well, see one of us flapping our arms and running around, it's because the rooms that we're in have auto shutoffs on the lights and apparently our motion is not enough. We need to be a little more fluid in our motions to keep the lights on apparently. We have to so. put some motion <laughs> in our emotions. That's right, that's right. Tom, Tom you were gonna you, say? Yeah. I, I think Jeff Jeff was gonna add about the, uh, the electrical aggregate program that's also. Coming. Yeah, that's yes. rolling out, yep. That's another item, right. He, he probably has some update on that as well. Um, uh, the, the, um, so we got the numbers back from each of the communities and I think Sunderland had the second highest participation rate um, of, of the 13 communities and uh, had the highest 100% renewable opt-in numbers um, of all of all the communities. So huh? uh, I think a, a positive response, and I, I would um, credit the the select board and the energy committee for for their hard work and and in selecting and and researching this and and making it the opportunity available to residents. Okay. All right. So it's Thanks. quite interesting hearing about the easy response in the colonial uh, presentation and how it was a series of holding companies versus not necessarily completely, anyway, it's complicated, but you know, it's nice to buy energy from someone who's probably not going to jail. So that said, yep. <laughs> and the local element. Right, which is a nice thing, so. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> I see our last item on our agenda is we've got some appointments for election workers. Um, so <clears throat> our town clerk, Wendy, would like us to appoint Justine Rose Warren, Michelle Burgess, and Olivia Leone as election workers. Motion. We have a second on that? I'll second. Is the town clerk available? No. She actually just slipped out moments ago. Fine. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. And uh, like to thank uh, Justine, Michelle, and Olivia for uh, their volunteering. This is going to be an, a busy election season, I think, and we'll be we'll be, all be doing it a little bit differently than we may be used to. So, <clears throat> and you know, actually, that reminds me too. I, may, I should point out too that we do have our new drop off right out the back by the elevator. It's a larger one, and I believe there is signage out front pointing folks around the back. So if you wanna 
drop off your uh, absentee ballots, please feel free to do that and save a little postal volume. And also too, when, once the next round of ballots roll out, the earlier you get them in, the better it is for everybody, so. And I see, uh, speaking of that, tomorrow is uh, the primary election in the state for the primaries. And our right now at the moment, our next uh, meeting is scheduled for Monday, September 14th, because Monday, September 7th is Labor Day, a little later than it's been this year, but there it is nonetheless. And hopefully the weather will slide on out in a little cooler compared to the way it's been, because I think we've pretty much set records this summer for hot days and days above 90 degrees. So I'm sure we'd all like a break on our electric bills from that. Mr. Chair, if I could I yes. guess, remind people who are watching or may listen in the future that uh, the, the, the town is a little more vibrant right now. There's more people walking. <laughs> That's more true. On bikes, there's more cars. It's that season. So it is. Watch out for your neighbors. Even if they're right. new, watch out for them. Keep your eyes on the road, folks. All right, thanks. All right. Uh, do we have any public comments tonight? All right. Um, with that, then I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. All those in favor for adjournment? Aye. Aye. All right, three to zero at uh, 7.37 p.m. <laughs>